Many years ago I used to play a ton of Warframe. I even streamed it on YouTube connecting with the game's passionate community. Unfortunately I was banned due to the receiving gifts from the community that were obtained illegally. At the time I had no idea and I was still very new to the game. But that didn't stop me from appreciating Warframe and how it evolved over all of these years. Warframe started out facing an uphill battle, primarily because of its PvE-centric free-to-play game in an industry dominated by paid games or competitive titles. Digital Extremes, the studio behind Warframe, had to overcome significant obstacles just to keep the game alive. Minimal updates made it difficult to maintain player interest, and in those early years, the game future looked uncertain. One of the most critical factors in Warframe's survival was the studio's design to hold on to their employees. In the darkest of times when Digital Extremes was teetering on the edge of closure, they retained their experienced development team. These developers who had been institutional knowledge of the game were able to steer Warframe through its rough early days. Without its core group of individuals, the game likely would not have turned out into this massive success that it is today. After the game's release on Steam, Warframe began to expand rapidly, both in terms of the content and the player base. The developers introduced features like clans, player hubs, new weapons, and a variety of Warframes. They also introduced new gameplay elements like open world areas, vehicles, and space combat. But the most pivotal moments in Warframe's history came with the release of The Second Dream, a cinematic quest that changed the very identity of the game. Up at that point, Warframe had been a solid free-to-play title, but The Second Dream elevated it to something more, with fully voice-acted characters, intricate writing, and high-quality cinematics Warframe transformed from a fun free-to-play game into a genuine great game that just happened to be free. This shift in the game's narrative and the presentation gave Warframe the same quality and depth typically associated with the AAA blockbuster titles. The studio didn't stop there. With the subsequent expansions like The New War, Whispers of the Walls, and the upcoming Warframe 1999, Digital Extremes has continued to push boundaries. These expansions bring with them deeper storytelling, higher quality cinematics, and character development that rival many paid games. Unlike most free-to-play games that change from premium content, Warframe consistently delivers major updates without requiring players to pay. This approach is a stark contrast of how other developers operate. In today's landscape of live service and free-to-play games, most companies play it safe. They focus on incremental updates, seasonal events, and minor gameplay tweaks, all while locking major content behind paid expansions and microtransactions. This trend is evident across popular titles like Fortnite, which is known for the updates its map, modes, and customization options regularly. But most games that didn't take risks or make significant changes without attaching a price tag. The biggest offender, obviously, is Destiny 2. Digital Extremes, however, has never shied away from making bold moves. A great example of this is the introduction of the Railjack system, at one point unlocking what was could be like described as a sea of thieves in space. The Railjack is a fully customizable ship that can be upgraded and operated by players in co-op. You fight other ships, board them, steal them, and raid the enemy bases. Although it had a rough launch and some initial issues, Today is one of the most fun systems in the game, feeling as if it had been there from the very beginning. One of the things that impressed me most about Digital Extremes is how well they supported their community. They value players in a way that many developers simply just don't anymore. In the early days of Warframe, players discovered a, a movement exploit called Zoran Coptering, where they could essentially fly across maps and complete missions much faster. Instead of punishing the players or removing the exploit, Digital Extremes embraces it. They saw that players were doing this to make the game more enjoyable, so they overhauled the entire movement system to create one of the most fluid, enjoyable system in gaming. This decision showed that the developers truly listened to their audience, and they're not afraid to adapt the game based on the player's feedback. I think that's one of the reasons why Warframe has maintained such a consistent player base for over a decade. Even when updates aren't perfect for the game, or the game goes through rough patches, the community stays engaged. Players, some of whom have been around since the game's alpha, 
still lo log in regularly and help guide new players. They continue to grind through content they've done hundreds of times because they genuinely love the game. And a big part of that is due to how Digital Extremes treats them. The studio's weekly dev stream are prime examples of this. Every week, the developers, including the CEO, goes live on YouTube and Twitch to talk to the players, answering questions and share updates about what's they're, what they're working on. They joke around, share stories, and show off community art. They also host Prime Time every Wednesday and Thursday, where the developers play the game with players, giving away skins, in-game items, and premium currency. This level of engagement is practically unheard of in the gaming industry. It makes players feel like they're truly a part of the game's development. Digital Extremes recognizes something that many developers have forgotten. Players are lifeblood of the game. Without them, there is no game. This understanding is woven into every aspect of Warframe's development, from how the developers interact with the community to how they have designed the game itself. The players know that they are appreciated, and they can see that the developers love what they do. That's why Warframe has been able to take risks with its content and maintain such a loyal following. Even with future projects like Soulframe on the horizon, players have faith in digital extremes because of the consistently proven that they care about the game and its community. Contrast this with many other companies today where the developers are underpaid, understaffed, and under immense pressure to deliver profitable results. Instead of focusing on creating a great game, many studios are laser focused on monetization. CEOs project growing profit without investing in games in growing content. Players feel this disconnect and as a result are becoming increasingly delusioned with the gaming industry. Recent controversies like Apex Legends making it harder to earn battle passes highlight this growing tension between players and developers and many other issues included. At the end of the day, players want to feel appreciated. They want to know that the developers are creating something meaningful, not just chasing profit. If a studio focuses solely on making money while ignoring the needs and desires of their players, they will inevitably lose their audience the moment a better game comes along. Warframe has proven that when you put your players first, when you truly value them, they will stick with you for a long haul. Digital Extremes has built something special, and I think many developers could learn a lot from their approach. Do let me know as well, what do you think about the Warframe? Seriously, is incredible, all the achievements that they've managed to do over a decade. Wow. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.